Hi everyone, I'm Josh and this is Josh Wright Piano TV. Thanks for joining me today. This is a pretty quick video, but a very important one that I wanted to uh, remind each of you of if you're not already familiar with it. In uh, his book, The Art of Piano Playing, Heinrich Neuhaus talks about boiling the water. And I love the analogy. He said so many students just get the water um, up to 80 degrees and then 90 degrees and then 95 degrees and then they never actually boil the water until they get so frustrated that they finally just make the sacrifice and boil the water along those same lines. So basically he's saying um, perfection, like he, you never actually get it perfect. And I'm not talking about playing it like Rachmaninoff third concerto perfectly straight through, you know, as many times as it takes. I'm talking about working small passages. Students often don't make the sacrifice to work those small passages to perfection. I want to add a little something extra to that today. Once the water's boiling and you see that first bubble rising, you don't immediately shut off the water um, or shut off the heat. You keep it boiling for a while. I'm sure you're either cooking something, you're trying to purify the water, whatever it might be. So <clears throat> I was just making a pro practice video on this uh, Schubert G flat major. And I've seen students just have a little bit of hiccup on this bar, on bar 39. So I just decided we'll, we'll demonstrate with this today. So sometimes getting into those positions, they can go, I've, I've heard mistakes there or they're kind of clunky with it though. They might slow down, they might over accent. So what I would like to add on to this is keep that water boiling for a while. So. You're gonna work. Until that feels good, and then, and then. Oh. Until that just feels natural to, to do that. Once that's in that type of shape, I want you to um, I always say, like, channel your inner Sergei Babayan. He would do this in lessons. It was the most fascinating um, experience to watch him do this. So he would just sit and experiment in front of you. So he'd say, we need to change the shape on this. And so he'd go to the piano and just miracles would come out of the piano. It's just such an amazing experience to watch him play. I still think he's the best pianist on earth. I mean, he's so incredible. And um, he would experiment with different ways of shaping it in real time in front of you and give you all these different ideas and then he'd be like okay now you do something with it and so it's like if you're too big of an idiot to actually do something after you just watched him do like eight different ways of shaping it it's like get out you know so um maybe a lot of time and you match those maybe you do this Still get bigger, but you take extra time. Maybe you go right into it. Maybe you want that nervous energy. So if you're gonna do that, maybe I take a little extra time at the beginning. I'll do this. Okay, that is such a wonderful exercise. First of all, you're gonna expand your creativity and imagination in a very big way. Second of all, you have all of these options to choose from. And third of all, you've kept that water boiling. You, you're in a perfect stage right now, albeit maybe just a half a measure, but you've just cycled that over and over again. You are ingraining the perfection of playing that over and over again, and then you're lacing it with artistry. Now, a lot of people don't believe me on this. They say, oh, you're full of crap when you say this, but I am a firm believer that if you put emotion into your music, you remember it better, and you can even play more accurately because your mind has an emotion to lock onto to help you execute it more effectively rather than just being a robot and then saying, okay, I'm gonna put shape in later. Continuously experiment with these things. I promise you, if you do this, uh, you'll, you'll see the magical effects. Get it perfect and then see how many different ways you can shape it. It's a really fun exercise too. A lot of people say, my favorite part of the learning process is just learning the notes. And I'm like, are you, 
are you serious? I like the polishing phase the best because this is when I get to experiment and really put imagination into my pieces. And the, the notes are all under my fingers. It's memorized, it feels good. And now it's just creating the most beautiful music I can. So I hope that gives you all a little bit of inspiration today. I'm gonna leave a few links in the description below. One of them is for a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite tips. Um, a lot of you have watched that, uh, but if you haven't had a chance to watch that, you can uh, click the link in the description below. Again, these are 10 tips that I use all the time in my teaching and also in my own playing pretty much every single day. Um, I'll also leave links for a couple of my paid courses if you'd like to take your studies even deeper than this channel goes over. I hope you all have a great week of practicing. See you next time.